things above and not on things of the earth. For ye are dead. He lifted that word, dead. Ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who, who is our life, shall appear, then shall we also appear with him in glory. Amen. Mortify. We're to put to death the deeds of the body, the flesh. Amen. It says, Mortify, therefore, your members, which are upon the earth, <coughs> fornication, uncleanness, in order, affection, evil concupiscence, and covetous, which is idolatry. For which things say, the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. This is what brings the wrath of God down upon <coughs> people. Amen. Because they walk in disobedience to God's word. Not doing what the word says to do. But if we become a doer and not just a hearer of the word of God, then God's going to bless us in our deeds. God's going to keep his promise to us and he's never going to leave us. He ain't going to never forsake us. He's going to go with us all the way, even to the end of the world. Amen. 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 He's here tonight to bless you. He's here tonight to lift you up. He's here tonight to encourage you to go on. He's here tonight to strengthen your faith in God. God wants to strengthen our faith. How many want your faith to become stronger Amen. than it is? Amen. I want mine to be stronger than what it is. Amen. Amen. Well, Johnny, I, I, I want to be more like you. I want my faith to please God. For without faith it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And the day that we seek him with a whole heart, then we're going to be found of him. <coughs> the Bible says, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he's near. While he's near, it's a time to call upon God. Call upon him and he'll save you. He'll come into your heart and life. He'll, he'll change your life. He'll make a new creature out of you. Amen. The old things will pass away. And behold, all things will become new. Right. Amen. Bro. You'll be a new creature. You'll be, you won't be the same person anymore. Amen. You'll be a different person altogether. Amen. And that's what the Lord wants to do. The Lord wants to make some new creatures out of us. God wants us to create his spirit within us and live within us. Christ wants to perform Himself to be strong in us. How many believe that? Amen. He Amen. wants to become strong in us Amen. so that we can show to the world that there's a better way of life and living than the way the world's living today. Amen. The world is looking for something better than what they see out of a lot of people today. Amen. Let's don't disappoint the people. Let's let our light shine. Let, let, let's let God have full control of our life. And that God do what he wants to with us so that they can come to know the Lord Jesus Christ. Heaven has got loved ones that you want to see saved. Heaven has got friends outside of Christ that needs to be saved. We need to be praying for them. We need to be seeking God for their soul. Amen. We need to be talking to God in their behalf. Amen. When Zion prevails, sons and daughters will be born into the kingdom of God. We pray. When we fast and pray. And seek the face of God. God hears and answers prayer. How many believe that he's a prayer here and a prayer yeah. answering God? Yeah. His ears is open to the prayers of the righteous. And he hears them when they call. Amen. And God wants us to call out to him and pray for those that are lost. Cry out loud. Amen. And spare not. Amen. Spare not. Amen. Cry loud. The Bible says to cry loud and spare not. But let the world know that Jesus is alive. And he's alive forevermore. Hallelujah. How many is glad you're here tonight? How many is glad you know the Lord tonight? How many is glad you're saved tonight? Come on. And set free. Amen. And you're no longer bound. Thank God you set it liberty. Thank God for the freedom that we have to worship God. Amen. We don't have to worry. Amen. We can come into the house of God and feel free to worship God. Amen. We can feel free to give him praise, glory, and honor. Hallelujah. Because he's worthy of all the glory and all the honor <laughs> and all the praise because he's worthy tonight. Amen. He is worthy. Brother Johnny, he's worthy of all 
that we can give him. We can't give him too much praise. We can't give him too much honor because he's worthy of all of it. Amen. Thank God tonight. I'm glad. I'm glad I know Jesus Christ is my Lord. Amen. Amen. And I'm glad I know him. I'm glad he is my Redeemer. He's my Savior. He is my soon coming King. Praise the Lord. He's good to us, ain't he? How many, amen, how many is enjoying your walk with God? Amen. 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 How many wants a closer walk with the Lord? Amen. amen. To live closer <coughs> to God in this day that we live, that God can, can prove Himself to be real in our lives. Amen. Bless the Lord. How many believe that God is a good God? Amen. All the time. Not just part of the time, but all the time. Amen. Sister Devon, God's a good God. He's a merciful God. He's a God, He's a forgiving God. He'll forgive those that will ask Him for forgiveness. <coughs> he will give us life and give it to us more abundantly. Thank you, Jesus. I thank God tonight for the life that he's given me. Yes. Amen. For the eternal life. Amen. It's life everlasting. I love that everlasting life. Amen. It's not just temporary. Brother, it's forever. <coughs> and I desire your prayers to pray for me that I'll always be what God's called me to be. That I'll always live the way God's called me to live. And be a light to those around me. And be a light to my neighbors and friends. Amen. I have a neighbor next door. I'd like to see him saved. I'd like to see him come. He's an alcoholic. I'd like to see him come to know the Lord. Amen. And then I've been praying for him. And I want the church to join in with me to pray for him. Amen. Because God can change the vilest sin. And he can't get to me. Look, look, look at Saul and Tarsus. How he was and God changed him. God, if God can change Paul, he, Saul, he can change anybody. Amen. If he can change a wretched like me, he can change anybody. Praise the Lord. I was lost and I'm done without God at one time. Amen. I was dead in trespasses and sin. But Jesus quickened me by his spirit. And I came to him and surrendered my heart and life to him, Brother John. And he took my life and made a new creature out of it. He, he made me a, a born again child of God. And I thank God tonight for being born again. Right. Jesus told Nicodemus that that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. He said, marvel not that I said unto you, you must be born again. It's a must. It's not just a, a haphazard thing. It's a must. You must be born again before you can see the kingdom of God. <laughs> you cannot see the kingdom of God until you become a born again Christian. Amen. 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 You're stuck. You, your life is full of sin until you become a born again child of God. Amen. You're still a sinner. Amen. And, and brother, you say, people say I'm a sinner saved by grace. I was a sinner saved by grace. Once I was a sinner, but I'm no longer living in sin. For the Romans 6 and 10. So how shall we that are dead to sin give any longer there in? God forbid. If God forbids it, he means us not to do it anymore, don't he? He means to forsake it. And forsake sin. And, and have nothing to do with it. I mean, we, we have no part of those who do evil. And we have no pleasure in those that draw back. I mean, but we're not of those that draw back. But we're of those that pull forward. We're those that press forward. We're those that push forward. Press in. The kingdom of God is yeah. pressed. And men press their way into it. It's a pressing way. It's a pressing way every day that we live. We've got to press our way into the kingdom of God. Yeah. Got, it's a hard the job for, uh, to work and stay where God wants us to stay. Stay yeah. humble yeah. and submissive to the will of God. Amen. Yeah. How many wants to be more humble yeah. and submissive yeah. to God's will? Yeah. So God can have control. Yeah. So God can take full control. Yeah. I want God to have full control. Yeah. Not just part of it. I want him to have all of it. Amen. Amen. I want to give him my entire being. Yes. Amen. I don't want to hold back nothing from God. I want to keep my life committed unto him. 
Amen. That's all I've got. I hope I've said something that'll be a blessing to you. That'll be a help to you along the way. That you'll be a better child of God. That we'll work together and pull together for the upbuilding of God's kingdom. Brother Derek, I'm going to turn the service over to you. Amen. I thank God tonight for the privilege that I've had to stand before you good people tonight. Amen. Praise the Lord. 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 Guarantee one thing. If we get born again, amen, and live for Jesus, we can make heaven to be our home. Amen. That don't mean it's going to be an easy journey. Amen. That don't mean everything's going to go your way all the time. Amen. But it's an assurance that God will not let you go. Amen. If you'll just keep that advocate with Him. Amen. Praise the Lord. I Tell him, Brother Johnny, this morning. Brother Johnny, you got anything tonight? Don't look at the time. You got something? I accidentally left my glasses at home. I've lost them one. You want me? <coughs> Come on. Come on, brother. Quit looking back there at that clock. If I didn't feel like you had something, I wouldn't ask you. Amen? Praise the Lord. But I can tell you, amen, that God's a good God. Amen?
Receive ye the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. How did you get saved? I got saved when I felt the Spirit of God. I got saved when God's Spirit, Sister Sandra, drew me to an old-fashioned altar. Are you so foolish, verse 3, having begun a work in the Spirit, are ye now made perfect by the flesh? Are you so naive that it took God's Holy Spirit to save you, but now you're able to keep yourself and do it all on your own? I don't think so. I think we're going to have to have God to get saved, and I think we're going to have to have God to stay saved. Because you can't get saved any time you want to, and you can't stay saved any way you want to. Come on. Come on, Praise the Lord. Come on, brother. We have to put God first above everything. I heard somebody say one time, if you can't be a Christian where you're at, you cannot be a Christian anywhere. Do you understand what I'm talking about? If God is not your God every day, He is not your God. If He is not Lord of your life, He is not your Lord. We have to put God first above everything else. One of my other favorite scriptures is Matthew chapter 24 and verse 1. No man can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. No man can serve God and mammal. Now I know that in most cases, or maybe theologically speaking, or maybe it's supposed to be that word is <laughs> represents materialism or money. But I look at it in another way. Y'all can look at it the way you want to. No man can serve God and everything else. Amen. You see, God will never be second to anything or anyone. He is God Almighty. He is Lord God, our Savior and our Waymaker. And I'm going to heaven by the grace and by the mercy of God and by the blood of Jesus Christ and no other way. There's another scripture that I like. And you'll find it. In Matthew chapter 12, verse 35. Man. And here's what it says. And if you've heard anything that I've said tonight, hear this. A good man, out of the good treasure of his heart, bringeth forth that which is good. Amen. You didn't hear me. Amen. It took God telling me that. I didn't know, don't even know, Sister Sandra, how many times I had to go over and over that one again. A good man. A good man. Bring us forth good things out of a good heart. That's what it's talking about. But an evil man brings forth the things out of his heart that are evil. You can't bring forth good things with an evil heart. You can't bring forth if you have a good heart. Let me just go ahead and read that. Because I wrote it down somewhere here. So I can make sure I got it exactly right. A good man out of the good treasure... Listen to what it says. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart. You still ain't got it yet. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things. Where do them good things come from? Out of the heart. You know, when I got saved, Brother Cletus, 
It wasn't my flesh that got saved. It was the spirit man that I was born into this world with. You see, when I came, I came here in the first birth in a bag of water, and I was born here a sinner. I had to go the second time with the water and with the spirit also. I believe, I don't know what you believe, but I believe we have to be born again. Amen. You will never go to heaven until God calls you and you repent of your sins and get born again. Amen. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Not everyone that says, Lord, Lord, is going to heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Amen. <laughs> Let me read something to you to kind of clarify a little bit. I feel like the Holy Spirit gave me this, and I'm going to give it to y'all. There has to be more than a change of action or a change of your mind. Amen. Or just following certain rules, oracles, or even morality. If we could make ourselves good enough, if that were possible through the flesh, then why did Jesus Christ have to die? Because we're not good enough without God. We'll never get there without God. I, don't, I ain't going to let the devil win tonight. Bless him, Lord. I have to take this cold shirt and everything else off. I'm going to tell you what God told me to tell you. You're not going to get there unless you're born again. You're not going to get there unless you've got God living inside of your heart. You're not going to get there living any old way you want to. You're not going to get there living like you might want to. But you have to go God's way or you're not going at all, church. Amen. We have to be holy because He is holy. And I'm going to tell you something, Johnny in the flesh is not holy, but Johnny in the Spirit because of the blood of Jesus Christ and the righteousness that He is. I'm holy because He's holy. Praise the Lord. Did you hear what I said? I'm not holy because who I am. I am holy because who He is. Praise the Lord. We're serving a holy God. Let me say it again because somebody don't quite understand. I said God is holy. Praise the Lord. In His house is holy. Let me just go on while he got me going that way. There was a man named Moses walking on the back side of the desert one time. And he was watching a bunch of sheep. And he passed by this bush. And he looked over at Brother Cletus to see why that bush wasn't being consumed by the fire. And all at once he heard a voice that came out of that burning bush. And it said, Moses, Moses, take off your shoes for the place wherein thou standest is holy ground. There was no temple. There was no people. There was nothing but a desert and a bush. But it was holy because it was the presence of God. How much more? We prayed. We built this place here. Not to look pretty, but we built it and made it for God. A place for God to abide and have His way in, in our lives. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I'm going to try my best to keep my daughter straightened out. My responsibility. That's why me and Penny decided to put her on the front row. I'm not bragging about that. But I want her to pay attention on what's going on up here and not what's going on out yonder. Because you see, it's necessary to respect and to adore and to honor the house of the living God. Every part of this ground that this, that this building says to every part of this place out here, if it's two acres, every inch of that two acres belongs to God and it's holy. Amen. Praise the Lord. The temple that we live in, that we've consummated to God, is a holy temple because He's a holy God. Do you remember in the Bible 
under the Old Covenant, in the Old Testament, not just everybody could go where we can go today. <laughs> Woo! Shout and ground, y'all. You see, tonight we can go to the same place that the high priest went to. Not even the priest were allowed there, Sister Sandra, but only the imp most important man of all was allowed to go into a place behind the curtains called the Holy of Holies. You know what they did? They tied a rope around his leg. They put bells on him just in case his life wasn't right. God was going to strike him down as he went in there to, to, to stand for the sins of the people. Did you know that we are in that place right now? When you feel the Spirit of God, you have entered in to the same place that the high priest did under the old covenant. I've noticed... And I'm not trying to embarrass my daughter, but I've noticed she runs around too much disrespectfully toward the house of God, Brother Derek. And it's my responsibility as a child of God to make sure that I bring her up in the right way. Let me say it again, y'all. Look up. Everyone over, just look straight up. <coughs> Now look around the walls. Beautiful place. Isn't it? But it's not near as beautiful as who resides in this place. Amen. Did you hear what I said? I said we are serving a righteous God and a holy God. Yeah. Moses didn't have no walls. No tops, no lights, no fans, no people, no pews, no But God said, Moses, take off your shoes because you're standing on holy ground. If I allow her to disrespect the house of God, I'm allowing her to disrespect God. Didn't mean to go there, but since we're there, you can throw rocks at me after a while. If you throw them now, I'm just going to lay down and let this pulpit keep them off of me, but the truth is the truth. And you know what? It's the truth that's going to make us free. I found out, Sister Rita, that the, net, that the day or the night that I heard the truth, I got free from that sin you was talking about, Brother Cletus. I got free from it. Most of y'all knew that I went to church for two years, and I was a good person on my way to a place called I didn't drink, I didn't curse, I didn't run around on my wife. And I went to church every Sunday. But I was as lost as 40 ducks in a dust storm because a church you can't save you. Mm. Oh, come on, y'all. Don't get this quiet. Maybe you're just thinking about it. Jesus said, No man can come unto the Father except by me. And no man can come unto me unless my Father's Spirit draweth him. Amen. So that tells me that I can't get saved just because I feel like it. I don't know about y'all, but I got saved when I got caught. Yeah. I got saved when God said it's time. And the brother Cletus quoted it a while ago, God's Spirit will not always strive with man. You know the worst thing. Hallelujah to God. Somebody hear me. I feel the Holy Ghost. The worst thing that could happen to anybody in this life is to not be able to ever again feel conviction from the Holy Ghost of the living God. Wouldn't it be a terrible thing if nothing bothered you? Come on. A reprobate mind shut up against God that you're not even able to hear His voice, understand His word, or feel His spirit. There wouldn't be a terrible thing any worse that could happen to you. It is to never be able to hear the voice of God again. You're not hearing a man tonight. You're just hearing my voice, but it ain't me. I assure you that what you hear tonight is coming from Almighty God and the throne of God and not just somebody's opinion. I 
got the Word to back it up. Come on, hold your Bible up, baby. Penny bought her a Bible the other day, Sister Sandra. She's very proud of her Bible. She's been trying to find every scripture that everybody would quote today. <coughs> Brother, <laughs> Brother Derek, this morning, she kept me and Penny busy looking for scriptures this morning. And by the time we found it, they, they done got to another. But she was interested. She told me this morning going out to the car, she said, Daddy, she said, ain't this Bible pretty? I said, yes, honey, that's a beautiful Bible. I said, but if you read it, if you don't read it, it ain't going to do you no good. Man. Yours ain't either. <laughs> Mine ain't either. Man, and I said, honey, if you can get this word in your mind, it'll change your mind. But if you can get it in your heart, Come on. it will change your life. Right. How many people here tonight don't want to live? Is there anybody here? Because we're going to pray for you if you don't want life. Is there anybody here so miserable that they're thinking about suicide? If it is, raise your hand. Be honest. There, I've been there and done that. <laughs> 357 with a hammer cocked back and a barrel in my mouth. By the grace of God, I never pulled the trigger because somebody somewhere, Brother Derek, was lifting up my name to God. Because you see, if I'd have ever let that happen, Sister Rita, I would have been in hell today. But somebody somewhere was talking to God. And I was at a place that I couldn't hear what God wanted me to hear. No doubt God was screaming, don't do it, don't do it. But the devil's voice was crying, go ahead, it'll be all right. Get yourself out of your misery. You know, the only reason I was miserable, Brother Derek, is because I wasn't close enough to God. Who is it here that don't want to live tonight? And raise up your hand if you'd like to live tonight. Anybody want to live tonight? Amen. The Bible says, not only will I give you life, but I will give it unto you more abundantly. Anybody want to be happier? Amen. Anybody want something else better Amen. than what you've already got? I'm talking about materialism. That's nothing. God is everything. Amen. You know, when you die, the Camaro ain't going to do you no good. The four-bedroom home won't do you no good. The brand-new boat sitting outside won't do you no good. Your car ain't going to do you no good. Your bank account won't help you a bit. Your job's not going to help you. But the only thing that's going to help you is if you're right with God. If the Holy Spirit of God is living inside of that temple. Amen. You see, if you wait till you leave here, you wait until, I'm not talking about here tonight, I'm talking about this world. You wait until you get to, until you leave here. You waited too long. God is calling your name tonight. Today is the day of salvation. Tomorrow may be too late. <laughs> we was talking to Kamar. I'm not trying to embarrass the baby. But sometimes kids can be a little bit rebellious. And I believe pretty much most of them are. But we was talking to her last night about a wonderful place called heaven. And we told her about a horrible place called hell. Maybe she was wondering, well, Dad, which way am I headed? I said, honey, if you want to know where you're going, check yourself. I said, do you know right from wrong? I said, do you know lying is a sin? Yeah, I do, Dad. I said, do you know disrespect to your parents is wrong? I 
said, do you know that stealing and cheating and all these things are sin? She said, yes, Daddy. I said, the thing about it is, sweetheart, no parent in the world has ever taught their child how to sin. Nobody taught me. Funny, ain't we have to teach somebody how to do right. But we don't need no teacher on how to do wrong. You know why that is? Because we're born sinners. I told Kamar, I said, if the Bible says to him that know to do right and doeth it not, it is sin. Somebody here tonight, you need God. There may be some saved people here tonight that need God. What are you talking about? I'm talking about you need a greater thirst and a deeper walk and a bigger hunger than what you've got. Because you see, if God's not your God on your job tomorrow, He's not your God tonight. Let me hear an amen. Amen. I know y'all are awake. If I'm ashamed of God, you'll be ashamed of me. Right. Brother Randy, you know the last thing that I wanted to do on this earth was preach because it scared me to death. I didn't want to upset nobody or hurt anybody's feelings. But if the Word of God upsets you and hurts your feelings, that's a good sign you need to get saved. If I'm telling you the truth, Somebody tell me, am I telling you the truth? Yes, you are. Brother Derek says I'm telling you the truth. I believe you, Brother Derek. You're not going to heaven because you're perfect. You're not going to heaven because you're good. You're only going to heaven because you're righteous. And there ain't but one thing that makes you righteous, and that's the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord told Jesus, Nicodemus came. Here we go, brother. John chapter 3. Nicodemus came to Jesus. And he said, Good master, what must I do? I think I'm in the right place, ain't I? The same, verse 2. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that you're a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Jesus answered and said, In the red, y'all look at it. Is y'all's red? That means God's talking. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, truly, truly, I tell you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. We done heard that one time tonight, so God must be trying to tell somebody something. We already heard you must be born again. <coughs> we already heard you've got to depart from the old nature into the new. Is that right? I'm not the same man I was before I got saved, Brother Derek. I'm not the same man that I was. And if you got born again, you ain't even. If you ain't no different than you was when you got saved, you missed it. Does that mean, brother, that I'm never going to slip up? No. You know how many times I've had to repent? Sister Sandra, one time I was up and she was praying for me. And she said, what you need, eyeball, eyeball, I'm talking about. What you need is to repent. What somebody here needs tonight is to repent. Amen. You see, the Bible says if we can't love one another, that we worship with every Sunday, how in the world are we going to love God? Amen. Amen. Think about that. Any man, the Bible says, that hates his brother is a murderer. And we know, the Bible says, that no murderer She'll enter into the kingdom of God. So if it's somebody here that you hate tonight, well, did you hear what I said? I don't know about y'all, but I'm having fun. Verse 4. 
Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? How can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? And Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is still flesh, but that which is born of Spirit, of the Spirit, is Spirit. Let me finish reading what I was reading a while ago now. The Bible says that no man, okay, let me go back up so, you'll, so we can get it all. Remember I said, I read right here, if we could make ourselves good enough, and if that were possible through the flesh, then why would Jesus have had to die? Would not then the law have been good enough? Or even morality? The Bible says that no man can be justified by the law. Amen. Doing good deeds, keeping good oracles, ain't good enough. Y'all y'all might hate me tonight, but maybe one of these days you'll love me when you realize the truth. It takes forgiveness and a new birth, which no man can do without God. If the whole world would only realize there's a better way, a better food, a better drink, a better life, and greater riches, this would be heaven on earth. Even we, who call ourselves Christians, or even like even me, Brother Derek, I need to get closer yeah. to God. You know why? Because I found out that sometimes there's too much of me, and I love what he said. Too much of me, Brother Cletus, and not enough of God. You know, day after day after day, and I know y'all get tired of hearing about my job, but the Lord just keeps bringing it up, okay? Because I'm trying to show you something. I have people that disrespect me so bad, Sister Sue. Over and over and over. Day after day after day after day after day. And after nearly a year and a half, I'm running out of patience. They've got me some new signs. That don't even work. One lady said, run you a piece of tape all around the area where you're mopping. I said, what for? They just don't jump over it. They're rude, incompassionate, inconsiderate. Well, you're judging them. No, I'm not. The Bible says you'll know for a tree by the fruit that's hanging on it, don't you? When I hear blasphemy, I figure that person ain't saved. But after a long period of time, I know that God is using this to make me a better person. Yeah. You see what he's trying to, and I know I haven't figured it out. He's trying to develop some character, Sister Sandra. I don't have enough character. Come on, bro. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Sometimes God will put you in some places that don't feel good. So he can develop you, Amen. your character. There's a person here, more than one. Sorry about that. I just caught it. But that was the set. There's some folks here tonight. Need some character development. You know, Jesus has a perfect character. Yeah, yeah he does. Job was an upright and a perfect man. Yeah. David was a man after God's own heart. Yeah. But they still had some flaw in their character. You know what God does sometimes? It, sometimes it takes the, the heat to burn out impurities. Sometimes we need to say, God, turn the heat up. Oh, don't worry, he will anyhow. If you're his child and you're acting like the world, don't be surprised if everything falls apart. Because <coughs> he's going to get your attention because he loves you. You know, I heard that uh, the 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 bee population is not as good as it needs to be. It seems like they disappear. 
Einstein said if the bees disappeared, human life would too in four years. America is getting to a place where she needs to recognize God again before the bees disappear. Because if the bees disappear, we're going to be hungry folks. And a lot of times that's what God did to his children. Because he loved them. I can tell you this. My character is better than it used to be, Brother Clayton. I remember driving trucks a few years back. And the, remind me, I never did. But there was a few people that I wanted to slap. I'm telling you. I hear you. God wanted to develop my character. You want to get out of the fire? Get it right. Because if you don't, God will take you back around the mouth again. Can you tell me sometimes when I get bent out of shape, Sister Sandra? When I get angry or upset or acting like Johnny, she'll say, Honey, well, she's got a way of saying that, Sister Sandra, make me want to do right. She'll say, honey, you want to go back around that mountain again? I go, oh, no, 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 no. I done been around that mountain enough times. I done been thrown in the fire enough. I want to rejoice. <laughs> Impurities will kill you. You let a virus get in your body that's bad enough and you can't get it out of there. You're graveyard bound. Sin is a virus and it's contagious. <clears throat> Birds of a feather flock together. I like that. Run with dogs, you don't get fleas. <laughs> How much? 